So these are our temps. This is a Shure instrument. Denmat sells them. So I'll start with the lowers because I'm gonna I'm gonna go down at the gum line and try to hook with a scaler, and you can see how that's starting to pop up. And if I can just unseat these from the gum line, believe it or not, Randy's been wearing these temporaries for three weeks, I think. Mm -hmm. Three weeks. Okay, so this stuff doesn't want to come off. I'm going to actually go in between the teeth and take a long, fine diamond and go into those embrasures and try to individualize these temporaries. So I'm going to take a long, fine diamond here and go over the surface, removing any of his composite here. So I'm having to go over the mid-facial of all these teeth where I spot etch them and make sure that there's no composite there. So on the upper, these are prepped. So I know that I can go in between these teeth. And so I'm going to go through and individualize each one of these teeth really quick through the uh, area. And this is the long fine diamond. So that one doesn't want to come off. So what I'm going to do is make a mid-facial. And since I know I can go down that deep, I'm going to go down that deep, trying not to hit the tooth. And then what I'm going to do is take the sure instrument. Okay. So there we go. Okay. Uh, there's composite right there, so I'm definitely going to have to take that off. Um, and when I contour this, would it be better to take off more or less? Obviously more, because then the veneer will fit. So I'm going to start back here and make sure there's no flat or debris or anything on these. So because I have all rounded surfaces here, I should be able to see where my composite is and isn't. In Randy's case, we're not changing the vertical dimension at all. Um, so there we have it there. So let's dry try in. That's it. And so this is a Lumi grip that actually holds the veneers in place. So there's our dry try-in on the upper. I like everything. So one of the things that we haven't discussed is Joanna already silenated these veneers. And that means that she's already put the silene inside and we don't have to resilinate it. So if you look in here, the coating for the silene is in there. We'll come back and we're going to try in um, the two centrals with a couple different colors. So if I wanted to bump these up in color, I'm going to take the opaquer and put it on. If I wanted middle of the road, I'd do block out. And if I want a little more translucency, I uh, do Ultrabond. Ultrabond comes in different colors, Blockout comes in different colors, and the Tetrapate comes in different colors. So if we take this and we're just going to try one on with some one color, and I'm going to go down here and pick the A1, and I'm going to go extremes here. So that's like an A1 Ultrabond, and then I'm going to put a Tetrapate enamel on the other side. Maybe we'll learn something. Okay. Can you? Maybe just mm -hmm. a hair mm -hmm. lighter because mm -hmm. it's more blocking out the cervical mm -hmm. color. Mm -hmm. Okay, so looking at that, the right side on that is supposed to be slightly more opaque, and the left side is supposed to be slightly more translucent. And obviously, the more thick the porcelain gets, the less I have what? 
So I could cement this anterior four with a clear and it's probably not going to affect the color much because it's a full prep. I call this a full prep case. At least the front four teeth are. The rest of them aren't. Okay, so let's take these off. So these are already silenated. That's eight. She does not have to re-silenate these. All she has to do is blow off the excess, take an unfilled resin called Tenure S, clean out the inside, and then we just go forward. Okay, so I put some resin on there, right? So I'm a little worried that I can't etch through the resin, so I'm going to very quickly polish here. Oh, I'm sorry, we're going to to on this down for this. Okay, so this is Denmat's etchant. It's called Etch and Seal. Uh, one of the things is I will always want to make sure I never dry teeth prior to etching. You always want wet teeth for etching. If you over dry teeth, the osmolarity gradient of to driving the phosphoric acid into the dental tubules is much greater if you dry your teeth and then etch. And so you notice if I dried these teeth, I would have re-wet them before I etched for that very purpose. So now we want to look for etch and etch surface everywhere. Okay, so now we're going to use tenure A and B. That's the system. It's mixed equal parts. This is an old tradition Bowen based system been around many many years. We want to use a large white brush here. If there's a little moisture on the surface it's okay because this stuff forms a it's an acetone solvent based and it'll suck the moisture off the tooth. And in the instructions it says to do three or four coats. Mm -hmm. If you just apply it multiple coats here and if you evaporate it with a saliva ejector, you'll see and within one coat I can, or two coats, I can get a glossy surface on that surface. If I come in and I go ahead and blow it really hard like this, that's bad because now all the resin is somewhere else and not on the tooth. So this, the thinner the bonding agent, the more you evaporate the, the solvent. The thicker the bonding agent, the more you blow it on. I'm only going to probably put two coats and I'll get a glossy surface here because I'm letting it sit and evaporate rather than uh, blowing it hard. And so almost the saliva ejector, and if I did use this air, I would come back from a distance like this and go from this distance, not up close and go wham. So now we've got a pretty glossy surface there and that's only two coats. Now we're gonna go ahead and use the Tenure S. The Tenure S goes in and we're just going to cover the bonding surface and now Joanne is going to start to load up each of the veneers and we'll just pop them on, boom, boom, boom. So we blow this area. Now you can blow the Tenure S a little thicker because it's a thicker resin. And as I just said, I said the thicker the resin, the harder you can blow. So this is that little suction driven thing. This is when I want to look for what? Bubbles. We don't want that. Okay. So this number, what number? Eight. Okay, we're going to seat this on. This is nine. Sorry, Randy, I'm sticking you in there. Seven. So we just go ahead and... And check in. See, like right there, that... We want to make sure that, see that, can I get a little more in there? Mm -hmm. When I picked it up off your finger, it moved off the right knee incisal. Good, go. This is called a Lumi Grip. Um, this thing is fantastic. Um, the uh, Dennis Wells, the guy, the ACD, no prep guy, he goes, you have to have a Lumi Grip if you do minimum prep veneers. Um, he's a big advocator of a Lumi Grip. Um, if you do a lot of Ceric inlays and onlays, this thing also works great for seeding them. So now we're going into five, and just making sure it's all there. Randy's got our system down here. A little 
piece of cotton there. Okay. Pull down and see. You can see this looming grip lets me get in there and place them without using. Go ahead and look, make sure we got all this resin in there. Okay, and then we go ahead. Um, I don't want to move these too much. You can look straight up. I'm just going to go ahead and seat, 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 make sure they're all seated. And what I'm looking for now is any of them that look out of alignment. And I may want to take the mirror from the incisal edge and look down and say, are they all seated? Does everything look good? At this point, um, I would tack each one. So this is one second. And the way I normally do is take the incisal edge, seat it down, let it go. Don't push on the veneer. This is supposed to be a passive fit, not bite down on a, uh, what are those things, orange wood stick. I don't know why it had to be an orange wood stick. What was it? Certain consistency of the wood. Now at this point, we're going to start talking about cleaning up the excess. And at this point, we can come in. You can either use one of these dabbies things and clean up the excess. Um, you can either use a 2x2, two two, or some people will floss at this point. Um, sometimes I'll just take a cotton roll on the lingual with a little resin put in it. And I'll just go on the inside and just wipe all this away because we have decent margins here. And then I'll just wipe everything on the excess. And then we're going to take this. I don't put this on the surface. I back off. If you're using this sapphire light, it's got the same energy at 10 millimeters versus 1 millimeter. So if I back off and come back, I can get the whole entire tooth in 5 seconds. So I'll just do an entire cure here, five seconds per tooth. And you're looking pretty much darn good here. So we're going to go down below. Um, we haven't dry fit anything yet, so we'll go ahead and put in um, these guys real quick. Usually the things that hold up the veneers are either you didn't reduce the incisal edge enough and you still have a little bond or cement on there, or the embrasure areas, the, there's still a little bit there where they tried to wrap in and it's real thin. So because these are less of a prep, these don't have as much of a definitive seat. Now, when these are sort of floating on the surface, because you can see that I didn't prep a margin on the lowers, and I just rounded out, I, I went a little bit into the embrasures, and then These all line up great, but there's a little bit of a rock. If you just seat it down on the incisal edge, they all go down beautifully, okay? This one, I may take a little, just a hair short there, and I may take a little bit off the incisal edge of that one. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to go. Here's 27, 26, 27, 26, the one I want to adjust, 25, that one. 22, no, 3, 22, 21, okay. So I showed you that I wasn't quite happy with this guy here. And he was just bugging me a little bit. So there's always got to be a thorn in your side, right? So because of my confidence level, I'm going to go seat this one and open Randy just a little bit. I want to make sure all of that bond that I put on the facial aspect is gone. And that when we etch the incisal edge, I'm going to take a little bit of it off the hair off the top. Okay, let's go. Okay. 10 seconds, 8, 9, 10, and then we rinse with a copious water lavage. Come forward just a bit, Joanna. Put the other forward and back in the table.
Okay, so now we go to A and B again. I'm looking here for frosted enamel everywhere. So we're going back and forth. Don't try to use a micro brush with this tenure A and B because you won't carry enough volume of the liquid A and B to the tooth. If you're going to do a micro brush, you're going to go back and forth 18 times to get the same volume that I just got in two goes. And then what I want to do is come back from a distance or use a saliva ejector, gently evaporate this, and then get a little closer and blow off any excess. So you notice how gently I evaporated, and then I'll go right to the tenure S. So what happens if Randy right now decided to cough? If he did, I would just blow it off and add more tenure S and go. I would not back up and not re -age and not do anything. Okay, so 21, sorry Randy here. So we're gonna look here and take a look. Is there any bubbles in there? Nope, okay, good. So we go, 21? Yes. We wanna see when we seat these down, we wanna make sure that cement comes out, the gingival margin and the incisal margin, all the margins, so we want excess. Now I could use matrix strips here, and if I use matrix strips, if you use clear mylar matrix strips, you are not going to be able to seat all these veneers down because there's not enough tolerance in the contacts. Okay, so that all looks pretty good. I think they're down. What you don't want to do is get a suck back void, and I'll talk about that. You seat it down, you clean up the excess, and you go, and then you seat it and you just got a bubble in it. So I'm just going to go forward here and tack everything. Okay, so we take that there, and then we'll just clean up, wipe off the excess, clean up on the inside here a little bit. The good thing is, because he's got a lot of spaces, when I open contacts, it'll be relatively easy. Okay, so now we're going to come in and cure everything. Five seconds from a, if you have a strong arc light like the sapphire, I, I can tell you, Research shows you can hold it away from the tooth and you can get the whole tooth all in one go. If you don't, then yeah, I would do multiple cures per tooth. And so this light, I think, I have, I have these in my office and yes, I paid for them all. And they're in every operatory for all my poster composites. Now, yes, the finishing, there's a set of burrs that I want to go through here real quick. If I come up, these margins, they're almost finished. And there's maybe just a smidge of composite there. If I do the, the no prep, there's probably more of a catch on this one. That's still pretty good. So somewhere along here, I can probably find a catch. The way you would finish a direct class five composite is the way I want to do this. There's two finishing burrs you have a choice of. One is a long fine diamond. The other is a carbide. The carbide doesn't cut on the end. The diamond does. The diamond's quicker, but you can you have to come back with a carbide. So I'm going to switch to the carbide here. Okay, so what are we an hour in? I think we started late. So you notice sometimes I'm using two hands, sometimes I'm not. I'm resting on the porcelain. And I'm just going to go pretend these are a bunch of class 5 restorations and clean off the excess here. The margins are there. You just need to finish them. So just go through the composite. I mean, obviously, if you clean up a little more, it's easier. But if you clean up too much and pull it out from a, from a margin, then it's not good. Okay, then I'm going to go on the lingual side. Go up in the embrasures here. And I do have a bunch of little excess composite on the 
lingual surface. So now we'll take a football burr and just go to the lingual. Um, right now I probably prefer more light, but it's all right. You guys can probably see better without. What's interesting is when Randy had his first set of veneers, the dentist left the composite on the lingual of the upper as mm -hmm. like a... Uh, I'm not entirely sure why, but just to cover it so you wouldn't wear it down so much or something. Um, I'm just going to finish off your margins just like some natural teeth are there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just continue on here. So we did a little gross finishing there. I'm going to come up the embrasures. Oh, there's still a little excess. I left a lot on this bicuspid over here. Sorry, Andy. I'm just going to have to trim a lot off the of So we want to come up into these embrasures. Put that cement out. Okay, so we'll come in with the uh, football and the lingual again. And um, we're just going to run this around. I'm sorry, I got my hand in the way of you seeing anything. So now I'm going to take the 12 fluted burr and run up the lingual, just like we did. Um, some people would take the scaler out right now, maybe, and do some of this. They're really fat. I feel personally I'm faster with a handpiece. And come from the facial just to open up any, get rid of any of that composite that I got there. Okay, so we just placed 16 veneers and in about an hour. So let's do this. There is a seri saw and it's got little grits on the end of it. And if we go up and we go in between here and you don't hold it here, this just tightens it, okay? And so what we do is tighten it fairly firm, not super tight, grab it right here and go back and forth. And if I couldn't get through that, I would rock down, okay? Okay, now that cleans it out. So this is a seri sander. There's one sided grid on here. It's not here, just here. Um, you wanna come in here and have this wet. Okay, so this has got tight contact in here. That's good. And if you can't get it down, then you can always rock it. And then you'll see it go down slowly. Okay? And then you take that off and rock it up. And a little bit better, maybe? maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So with the Seri sander, this is a diamond grid on one side. If we go in here... See how much easier that was? That was easier. Okay, this is one little trick. I want you to loosen this up, and then when you pull, I want you to wrap it around. Can you see how that bends? And you want to follow the contour of the tooth and just go back and forth a couple times like that. And you want to be below the contact if possible, okay? And so I'll go in like this to polish one side and then come out. This is the other side, so I'll turn around, come in here, loosen it up, wrap around the papilla there just like that so then I'm going to hold that right there just on that and just polish a little bit so on the bottoms I would do the same thing okay now what I normally would do at this point is just adjust the bite and get him back in to the office and do all the little detail finishes in the office don't worry about getting everything perfect that first visit and the problem is, he, yes, he still has a little composite here and there. And, you know, you can tell people don't floss and open the contact the second visit or something like that. There's little bits and pieces here and there of composite still. There's a big piece on there, canine. So I'm just trying to get any excess off the facial aspect here. 
Mm. And I'll go ahead and just tuck, tuck, tuck. And we'll come back in here, open. So, and you know, we didn't use that paint on dental dam to isolate the posteriors here. So there is composite all over the back teeth. Maybe that would have been a benefit to do it. Mm -hmm. And by down, tap, tap, tap. Open. Number 10. Yep. Open there for us. Oh boy, you're right there on the incisors. Okay, and suction. So there's the uppers. Okay, that's the implant over there. You can see the healing cap. You guys can see the healing cap over there? Yeah. And then this is the lowers. I still want to adjust. He's hitting just up in this area, so I just I still want to touch that where all that porcelain is up there. Okay. So you guys have all heard of a tie base. So this is the healing cap. And we got a good, so there's the healing cap right there. The tie base looks like this. It has a screw in it that I will put in now. And so what I need to do is make a tooth that goes in there, okay? So the easiest way I can do that is I take a lab analog and screw it on the tie base. So there's our tie base, and that's a lab analog. So now we want to build up a composite tooth on here real quick. This black microbrush by accident or on purpose fits in there perfectly. So this is the enamel tetrapake. Why am I using tetrapake here? Because this is like a PFM. So I'm going to cover this, and I'm just going to very quickly run it around the surface, just on the titanium. If you wanted a better bond here, you could sandblast this. Um, which I would recommend if you want to make it more permanent. Okay, so I'm going to take the light, spin this around, and I'm just spinning it around, 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 maybe get two rotations out in five minutes. Okay, now I'm going to pick my tooth color that I want to put over this. There's two types of tips. You've got the pink tip or the black tip. In my office I use a larger tip here. Now I'm just going to roll out and build up a chimney. So I'm going to go up on this composite here. And you see how I'm going up there creating a chimney on, around the microbrush. Okay. So I'll go ahead and light cure that. Sorry, get out of the picture here. So now I have a beautiful blob, don't I? If I was going to do this on the anterior, and I had an anterior implant, I would be building this chimney up higher. If I'm going to do it on the bicuspid, I how high do I need this? Not much higher than I got already, right? So we're going to take this out, cotton pliers. Now you've got the baseline of that Turn this way. I put tetrapake on there so I can get it white enough. And so this is indexed because it's an engaging. Okay, so I'm going to rotate this so it's engaged and we'll tighten it down. Okay, so now it's down. Now I'm going to take my shade and I'm going to come in and see that whole buckle area there? There's my large tip. Will this be one? Yeah. Um, I'm going to go right down on the tissue here and just light.
Does this look difficult so far? Okay, and then I need contacts. So right here I'm going to put a blob of a contact. And then like cure that so I know where the contact is. And the back one I already pretty much have. Okay, so we'll like cure that and we're going to pull out our blob. That's a technical term for our temporary. So it's a little more facial here. I could go trim that back and then we'll take it out and we'll polish it up and we can put it in. So I'm going to cut this back a little. So this is all just based, so we want to contour somewhere, I guess about there maybe, a little more. Okay. So now you have your orientation. You got this blob on the outside and two contact dots. And so what we do is go ahead and screw this in. And we're going to dry it out. So let's analyze this. I want the tissue to heal so that I can make it more like a, if you want more contour here or less contour. So I'm just going to go add some material around here. This just gives me a form to where to go. Um, this is our distal surface here, so I'm going to add right to there. If you want to add and build a lingual cusp, and then we'll just adjust the bite here. Okay, and then we'll take the light, spin this around, close your eyes, Randy, sorry. So all I'm doing is just polishing this. And then I'll add and subtract composite here to what I like. Okay, so then you like cure it again. And then a little down the middle here. And you can spend a little more time polishing this if you want. Okay, so I need to add a little smidge to the mesial, but I'm running really quick here. And then you can see on the buckle. And what I like about that is that'll form the tissue better than the healing cap. You know, now I've got a buckle contour where the tissue will heal up. And technically his extraction site was really large where the tooth was, the implant's here, and I'll get a little tissue press to cover that gap zone or what we call jump space between the crest of the bone and where the fixture level is at the implant.